So the plan for today is to go out and take some images of the coast and trying to blur the waves with technique such as slowing down the shutter speed. So I've got this image from Shutterstock. So this is what I want to create, like a blurred effect of the waves when it hits the shore. I think they look really attractive in photography and I think it'll be a nice little exercise for you to do. Um, so before you go anywhere, before you take any images, if you do live near the coast, this will be a nice little exercise for you to do. So you need to do a checklist before you go anywhere. The first thing is you need to do is check that you've got the SD card in the camera. So just check you've got your SD card. It's best if you format it before you go so you've saved all your other images off the card and you've got a clean slate so you're not worried about um, filling your card up. It's probably best as well if you take a spare SD card with you. Sometimes people forget to take SD cards and it's happened to me before and I've had to go and buy one. Um, it's happened to me more than once. So it's probably best if you try and keep an SD card say, in the car and then if you do ever forget it you've got one in the car. Battery. Make sure your battery's charged. These batteries, if you're taking photographs, they last a long time in this particular camera, but some batteries don't last that long, just a couple of hours. So if you've got some spares, take some spare batteries with you. So SD card, battery, lens. If you've only got the one lens and you don't have to worry about lenses, but if you've got more than one lens, you need to think about the type of lens you want to use. So um, for like... Um, landscapes it's probably best to use like a a, a wide angle lens um, so this is 11 to 16 millimeter lens here um, you can't do landscapes in any kind of lens but um, you get more in the scene if you use like a wider angle lens and um, so you choose which lens you're going to take with you now, for, to blur any kind of image outside, it's, it's you're going to let in a lot of light by increasing the shutter speed on the camera. So, to counteract the extra light you're going to have to let into the camera, you need an ND filter. Now, some people use the big, I don't know if you've seen them before, like a big square bracket thing that you attach to the camera and then you slot in these square... ND filters some people prefer to use those now I have used one of those before and I was on a pier I think I was at the Lake District and the ND filter slipped and fell into the lake <laughs> so I lost it so that put me right off using them again and um, so what I've got instead are the circular ones so this, you can get like expensive one, like Lee Filters is the well-known brand for these. Um, but this is a cheaper version. This is called Newer and it's an ND1000. So this is like showing you it's going to stop out the light and that's the grade it's at. And it's 77 millimeters because... Um, so uh, I've got two lenses that are 77 millimeters. so this fits on both of them. So you just screw it, you just screw it. Make sure it's on tight so it doesn't fall off and, uh, and it'll be black. And if you try to look through the viewfinder you won't be able to see anything because <laughs> it'll be too dark. The only way you can see is if you increase your light until it's really bright and then you like the slower shutter speed and then you can focus and set it on manual focus and then so um with this particular lens to set this on manual focus you you pull it back like that and automatically you push it forwards different to other lenses i've had so i'm just going to take this off so what i tend to do is 
you're going to need a tripod because you're using slow shutter speeds so you put your camera on a tripod and um, the first thing you should do is focus on the area where you're going to take the shot so it doesn't really matter what shutter speed you've got this on for when you do your first focus so focus where you're going to take the shot set your aperture if you're doing like a landscape you could use like a mid-range one like an 8, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 something like that or higher set your aperture and then um, once you're focused put this on a manual focus it's a switch on some lenses and leave it on the tripod and don't move it and then put your filter on after you've focused it because it's already in focus now so when it's on the tripod attach the air uh, the filter so and then you can use your swivel screen to watch what you would watch what you're doing and um, then when you've got it already fo manual focus you can then change your shutter speed turn it right down so I'm going to show you um, so some examples uh, with shutter speed is they, they recommend between a half a second and two seconds or longer if I've got an ND filter on I'm going to need a longer shutter speed and uh, so it's a case of, case of trial and error so if you take a couple of shots and then just check what they look like you might need to have longer shutter speed or slower shutter speed depending on the effect you want to create so you, you probably need to do a few test shots so I've also got one of these filters for a smaller lens I've got and I've got some polarizers so a polarizer will help like make the sky bluer and it gets rid of reflections that are in water like if you were doing rock pools it would get rid of the reflections out of the rock pools if you were using this instead of an ND filter and I've got another polarizer for another lens that I've got and um, this is like a really nice little cleaning thing for your lenses you can get these off Amazon very cheap to buy this is called a lens pen classic and it's got like a rubber end and I use it all the time so if you if you, you can use it on your ND filters you just do this if you see any dust or any kind of fingerprints on it I'll just take this off a second and you can do it on your lens as well if you see any kind of dust or fingerprints on it And it's got a little brush as well that you can sweep away any dust from your lens as well. And if you're at the beach, you're likely to get sand and things on your lens. The wind will blow it on your lens. You know, it could be that you're being careful with it, but the wind could blow wet sand on your lens. So if you have one of these little brushes with you, um, just in case that happens. And they're just easy, go in your pocket, very small. I've got a couple of these now because uh, it's something I, I depend on, <laughs> I really depend on these and uh, so the hood as well to if you've got like a lot of glare from the sun to, to get the, stop the sun flares getting in your camera so a checklist before you go SD card you need battery make sure it's charged wide angle lens if you've got one don't worry if you haven't got one ND filter if you've got one if you haven't got one you're going to have to increase your aperture so it's higher so that you can let more light in so you could go up to a 22 or something like that aperture wise and um, hood for your lens if you've got one tripod is a must if you're slowing down your shutter speed you definitely need a tripod so that's before you go so you made your checklist you've got your things and then you can head off to the coast and it's quite nice and pleasant um, sitting on the beach doing these kind of images and 
if you've got time and you live near the coast, it's a nice little activity to do to experiment with your photography. So I found a spot on the beach and I've got my camera on the tripod. I've focused on the area I want to focus on. I've now put it into manual mode. I've put on the filter. So I now need to do some test shots and just experiment with the shutter speed. I've got it on a timer so I don't knock the camera with it being on such a slow shutter speed. So I've got a timer on for two seconds. I did start off with too slow a shutter speed. I think I had it about 20 seconds or something. And then I tried it on six seconds and I thought that was a bit overexposed as well. So I ended up using four seconds. You can see the tides coming in. I kept having to move the camera because of the tide coming in. But I wanted to get close to the water. So here's an image I took first. This was to focus the camera. So this is F11, 1 800th of a second, and the ISO was 100. So I needed it at 1 800th of a second because of the bright light that was there with the sun. And you can see in this image, you can see the waves in the sea. There wasn't a lot of waves I was disappointed about. There were very gentle waves and I was like in my head, oh no, I want some big waves. Uh, but they were just gentle waves to start with. So the result isn't that impressive uh, because the waves were fairly gentle to start with. It might be best to do this when the tide's really coming in and there's lots of rolling waves coming or on a stormy day. Um, it might be better to do it when it's like stormy weather. Um, but um, a gentle waves like this, there wasn't much of a difference, but there is some difference. So I'll just show you the difference. So this is F11 over four seconds. The ISO is still 100. And you can see the waves have practically disappeared and you can see a little bit of white where the waves used to be but it's a much calmer um, sea it almost looks like a painting and i think that's what um, photographers try to aim for to try to aim for this soft delicate feel of the water like it is like a painting like a watercolor you can see the figures there on the beach, they're all blurred and the reason they're blurred is because it's a slow shutter speed. Um, so what I'll probably do with this image is I'll crop them out. And if you don't want to crop your image, you can use in Photoshop, you can use the healing brush or the healing tool and you can get rid of them that way. Now these, exam these two examples I'm going to show you now, this is what not to do. Um, so I went to this beautiful area in the south of England called Doodle Door. It's a very famous landmark and lots of photographers flock there to photograph this arch. And I was there, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. The sun was very bright and you can see a lot of the uh, detail is lost. It's overexposed a bit in the background there. And um, if I'd only had a polarizer with me, it would have been so much better or an ND filter, which I didn't have with me. So I've learned from that lesson now. So if I ever go to any course now, it's best to take either a polarizer or ND filter um, just so you can make sure you do get your image exposed. So this is the image um, on a normal shutter speed. By normal, I mean it's n it's not a slow shutter speed, and uh, although there's not many waves, you can still see some detail, some ripples in the water, um, and you can see some splashes there, people in the water. Um, so, what not to do is not to go without your ND filter because you'll end up with an image like this one. So you can see the water is like a glassy, like no ripples in it. 
um, it looks like an ice rink. So this was taken over a quarter of a second at F11. But you can see the background is way too overexposed. Um, and so I think this image has been ruined. And uh, when you think, when you travel such a long way to such a beautiful place, um, it's always best to be prepared with the right filter. So this doesn't happen to you. I haven't taken many images with the blurry effect of the water. Um, this one was taken um, at Tynemouth, I think it was at Tynemouth. Um, so this one looks passable, I would say. At least it's exposed correctly and it has got a soft, gentle effect of the waves. And another thing with the slow shutter speed, it also softens your clouds as well because the clouds are moving. They should go a little bit on the blurry side as well, your clouds. Here's a beautiful photograph by Mel Brackstone and it's of Godfrey's Beach in Tasmania. And I just think this is so beautiful and I think the, what makes it so beautiful is the sunset as well. And he's got quite a lot of rolling waves coming in that he's managed to blur. So this can give you some inspiration like a sunset or a dawn where you've got the sun coming up and you've got the orange highlighted in the sky and reflecting in the sea and on the sand. Um, that could inspire you to make some beautiful photography like this one. So go and have fun. Go, if you can, go to the coast. If you can't go to the coast to experiment like this, you could try doing a blurry effect of the clouds to try and get the um, clouds to blur using an ND filter. That would be an interesting thing for you to do if you can't get to the coast. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you've learned something from it. Until the next one, bye for now.